Gentlemen, thanks for doing these interviews for us today. I just want to touch on the success of last year. The first UK number one was Deep Underground. Mm. Jay, were you surprised that it went number one? Uh, yeah, I was, because um, I nearly gave up on the song, to be honest, because <laughs> uh, it took about... Well, I started it in January, before we even started the album, and, um, and I wrote a set of lyrics for it, and, uh, and they consisted of lines like, uh, it's a good day to die, and <laughs> Godzilla, he's a killer. And, uh, and then I, I sent it to the record company, and we were spending so much time on it, and not enough on the album. And I got to this point, I was a bit worried, you know, that, that, that we would waste all this time because the thing about film companies is that, you know, you'll do the track, you'll waste all your time and money doing it, and then they just turn around and go, no, we don't like it. And I was kind of a bit annoyed about that, you know, I just feel that that's kind of an annoying way to do things. So, anyway, then I sent the track in, they said, well, we like the track, but uh, we don't want to mention dinosaurs, and uh, we can mention, like, underground, but uh, we have to feel sympathy for the dinosaur. So, uh, I found that quite strange. Very <laughs> difficult brief to work around that. You can't mention dinosaurs and you can't mention Godzilla, right? Okay. So anyway, I rewrote the lyrics in an hour. Um, Off the trial about four days before. You probably tell. Yeah, going really mad. And the bicycle courier was covered up the motorbike courier and he was going to take it away. <laughs> and uh, and he was sitting outside, you know, waiting for his tune. And I just sort of finished it, sent it off, and he said, hey, we really like it. And um, and that was that, and then it got released, and, and I didn't really like it. I mean, I did like some aspects of it, I just hated the way I had to hurry things. But when it went to number one, it was nice to get a number one. We had a party around here, sort of half celebrated that. The only day the sun came out. And uh, and that was that. It was, it was good to go there, you know, well, I, never, never, I, never, I never really thought we'd get a number one, because not that sort of band. Because a lot of people didn't expect to hear from you last year, but... Um, you were working on the album. It would be fair to say um, that it also marked a change in band personnel. How did that affect recording of Synchronise in Stuart mm. Land? Well, it was, uh, it was very difficult. We mm. were, it was a very bad time to leave people. You know, when you've done nine tracks and then, uh, you know, and then I think things sort of, you know, broke down to the point where really, you know, it's very difficult for us to work together, you mm. know, because um, Somebody want, when somebody wants to do their own thing and they're not focused on what you want to do and they want to pursue their own career, um, you know, you have to let them go. And, and it comes to that point when, you know, no matter how good somebody is doing what they do, if you can't work with them and get along with them, then you're better off letting them go. So um, that was the situation. We were left with nine tracks. Uh, this, our, this studio got started in January. Um, so we went in and did those nine tracks upstairs, finished in July. Um, and then by September, uh, he decided that he didn't want to bother anymore. So, um, we, to save any complications right. and legalities and what have you that go on, uh, I suggested that we completely rewrite a new album, which is what we did. And, uh, Difficult. What we have. In five and a half months yeah. to finish the album, especially when you go to such a knockback, you know, because obviously you know, the bass is the main part of what mm. we do. We're not. I mean, in some ways it worked as an advantage because we could use keyboard stuff and so we could program bits and bobs, which we hadn't done before. So it was a slight departure from style in a sense, you know. I don't feel you can depart too much from your style because people, you know, want to see a certain theme from you. And in a way, this album is like a crossroads album for us, you know. It's four albums, it's halfway through my deal with Sony. Um, and it's a, it's a crossroads album. It's the first album we've done in our own studio. And it takes a little bit of time to adjust to that, you know, it takes a bit of time to, to not treat this studio as like party place, you know, and treat the two separate things, the house and the studio, as two separate things, otherwise you get yourself into trouble. And you end up, you end up mincing around, you know, on stuff for ages and ages. You can mm. spend three days in a flute part or something like that, it's like, you cannot work like that. Mm. Um, so we took six weeks to find a new bass player, because by the time we got auditions together, and um, a sorted bass player came yeah, here. Awesome. Some of which tends to amuse the rest of the band <laughs> to the point where they could hardly play. I distinctly remember Derek being there one day, just actually just, and everyone looking at each other going, <laughs> me losing it slightly. Not anymore. Um, and but when anyway, we found uh, Nick, who was um, Nick Fife, who's uh, he's very very good, and he's he's done what's on the album. So. 
Yeah, but didn't he apply to Jamiroquai covers band? And that yeah. was yeah. and then he turned around and turned yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did get asked, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. He got asked uh, to do a camp and audition for the Jamiroquai tribute band. <laughs> Cool. A bit like the Bjorn again with Emma, but we've got one. I don't know what it's called. Jamiroquai or something, I don't know. But Jamiroquai, like I was in the sun the other, the mirror. But, um, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he, 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 he phoned them up and they said, come, come down and do an interview and uh, do an audition and see what's going on. And then, uh, and then the next day, had an audition with us. So when they phoned up, said, hey, come down to the rehearsal, man. Yeah. <laughs> he like, said, uh, like sorry. Do. He said, sorry, I've got a job with Jamiroquai. So that was quite amusing. I thought that was funny. So he fits in really well. He really fits really cool, well. Yeah. It's difficult to find someone. They've got to get along with you. Mm -hmm. They've got to like the stuff we do. They've got to know that we've been doing this for eight years now, you know, ten years. So it's like, you know, we were quite set in our ways. Mm -hmm. and obviously the and he was also put under a bit of pressure as well because he basically had to just find new bass lines and things like that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Without having any guide from what we'd already recorded, yeah, it was just a case of mute the track, play what you want, and yeah, then exactly. just guide you through. Exactly. You know? I think there was one track we kept off the, uh, off the old stuff, mm. you know, that we'd done, uh, and that was it. But I'd rather write stuff again, to be honest, because mm. I always think it's less grief because, you know, you get to the stage with people and people start, you know, becoming bitter and saying that they done it and they've written mm. it and all this kind of rubbish goes on so it's like kind of the easy way to get around this thing. The album title Synchronise, do you think 